Okay, uh, good morning and uh, welcome to class, everyone. Let's pray and uh, we'll continue with our learning from this uh, subject, prayer and intercession. So let me uh, pray for all of us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your presence in our lives. Lord, we ask for the wisdom, the counsel, the understanding, knowledge that comes from the Holy Spirit upon each of us, Lord. You help us, guide us, and uh, Father God, enable us, Lord, to receive all that you are speaking to our hearts. Lord, once again, we thank you for your word. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we've completed a good number of chapters, some very important chapters so far. Um, things like praying in the spirit and uh, personal prayer life patterns. One needs to not just learn this as a course material, but more with the heart of applying it in our day-to-day -day life. So that's what I want to encourage each of us to do. Please use it. Okay, make some changes in uh, everyday prayer schedule, the way in which we approach God, and you'll see that you're personally being strengthened by what we are learning in this class. So it's meant to help all of our prayer walk, prayer journey with the Lord. Today, we will look at the topic of prophetic prayer. Okay, prophetic prayer. So whenever we consider the term prophecy, what does it mean? Prophecy? Okay, revealing the future. Yes, that's correct. Any other um, any other understanding of the word prophecy? Okay, what God wants to fulfill in your life. What, what we are going through, what God is going to do, the will of God. That's correct. So generally, we understand this word prophecy as um, hearing from God. In many instances, we have experienced someone sharing something about the future. That's why, uh, you know, some of you said about the future. But prophecy is not just about the future, which is forth telling. It could also be about, um, you know, something that has, that is in the heart of God. So even that we call as prophecy. So it does not necessarily have to be about the future. But prophecy is in general about hearing from God. And the Bible says that God's ways are higher than our ways. And God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We think a certain way, but God thinks a completely different way. So being prophetic, being prophetic simply means I am not just trying to think my own earthly, worldly thoughts, but at any given point in time, I want to think the way God thinks. For that, one thing I can do is read the word, study the word, renew my mind. So renewed mind will help me have the mind of Christ. We already have the mind of Christ, but we are applying it in our day-to-day -day life. So having a renewed mind, which is powered by the word of God. But in addition to that, prof being prophetic means hearing from God in the now, right now, hearing what is in the heart of God, in the mind of God concerning anything. So for example, if I want to pray for my family, I can pray any prayer that I wish to. Maybe the prayer sounds like, God, bless my family. God, prosper my family. God, protect my family. God, fill my family with peace and joy. These are my prayers. But when I want to pray a prophetic prayer, what I'm saying is, what does God want me to pray for my family? Maybe God's... Uh, thought at that time is pray that your household will be a household that fears the Lord. It's coming from the heart of God. My prayers are different. But when I say, God, I want to pray what you want me to pray, I hear from the Lord and I pray it. That is prophetic prayer. 
praying the thoughts of god praying the purposes of god praying the intentions of god praying the plans of god that is prophetic prayer so today we are going to learn about how uh, this prophetic prayer works and um, the importance of prophetic prayer don't just we should not just pray our own thoughts we must pray the thoughts of god okay now when it comes to our lives we've been saying again and again that god knows everything we don't know everything what is going to happen after 5 years can any of us tell about our lives no we can't what is going to happen after 10 years can any of you tell me where you will be we can't tell for sure but god knows everything god knows after 5 years what's going to happen where you and i are going to be what are we going to be doing right he knows everything and so we can ask god to reveal to us and when god reveals to us we know for sure that hey this is what is going to happen or this is what is god's purpose or intention so we start to pray along those lines so that's what prophetic prayer is all about let's read a couple of verses that reveal to us that our god knows all things even the deep and secret things so there are three scriptures and i want different people to read it uh, isaiah 45 and verse 11 thus thus says the lord the holy one of israel and his maker ask me of the things to come concerning my sons mm -hmm. and concerning the work of my hands you command me yes so god himself is inviting us to ask him concerning the things that are to come because he already knows about them and he can reveal it to us isaiah 42 verse 9 another person behold the for the former things have come pass and new things i declare before they spring forth i tell you of them okay it's a wonderful scripture you and i can remember this we can memorize it right what does god say he says the former things meaning the earlier things have already happened whatever was spoken of and now new things i am telling you before they happen i tell them to you so think about this our god can tell us beforehand and we will read a few instances in the chapter today because god already knows god can already god can declare it before time to you and me okay one more one more uh, uh, passage isaiah 46 verse 10 declaring the and from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not at done saying my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure okay so god is saying that he declares the end from the beginning nobody knows what is going to happen in the end but he already reveals it from the beginning we just completed the series on the end times this is the god we serve he likes to tell us about what is going to happen ima think about this god did not have to tell us about the end times about you know the antichrist the armageddon it would have been a shock for all of us oh what's going on in the world where did all the people get raptured but the bible reveals it because he declares the end from the beginning the end is already revealed to us it's as if you know if, for us to understand uh, it, whenever we read a book a mystery book usually a lot of things are happening in it and we are trying to find out who is the person right who is the person who did all these uh, uh, tricks and uh, if someone comes and tells you hey you know what it's this person they are the ones who have done it you feel so bad right because you're still reading the book and they already told you the end of the book but with god it's like that he knows who is the culprit what is the end of the book if you and i can ask god he can reveal it to us why does god reveal what is the purpose of him revealing 
things in the future preparation gives us time to prepare then yeah prepare ourselves for ministry do the ministry okay why should god tell us beforehand gives us hope okay to do his will okay preparation of our hearts sometimes our hearts are not ready but it gives us time okay motivation like when you see the vision you feel like okay great some amazing thing is going to happen so you go ahead with it why what else what are the other reasons okay if changes are required uh, we can also make those changes fine so all these answers are correct one major reason why god reveals beforehand is so that you and i can pray okay that's a major reason why god tells us well ahead so what is the major reason pray so whenever you and i get a dream okay or a vision or a prophetic word what do we immediately do you're saying pray because i said pray <laughs> to <laughs> one minute ago but what do we generally do yeah we are happy uh, and uh, don't we want to tell someone sometimes we do that immediately we we want to tell somebody i saw this dream uh or you know uh, there are people they are they get so excited they'll put it on youtube they put it everywhere i saw this god is saying this this is going to happen well all that should be done if god is telling us to do but if not one thing that all of us should do on receiving a prophetic word a prophetic message dream or vision is to pray we should always pray if god says go and share it to someone only then we have to go and share got it everyone so whether or not we are going to share it with anyone prayer is for all of us you pray when you see that uh, dream or vision or anything because god is revealing it to us with the primary purpose or intention of praying he wants us to pray Okay so let's look at some examples in God's word about uh, prophetic intercession so intercession is praying for somebody else what god does apart from our normal routine schedule of prayer he may put a burden in our hearts for other people and those who are called to prophetic intercession you know some people are called more than all others but in general all of us can engage in prophetic intercession uh, i'll come to you so when god puts a burden on our hearts it moves us into prayer so sometimes we suddenly um, get the face of somebody you know a close a friend of ours or uh, someone in our family and we get a burden we feel like we need to pray for them we need to pray a lot for them so that is prophetic intercession because we are hearing what is on the heart of god and we are praying it's not wrong to pray based on my schedule which i've written in my book but in addition to that i should be sensitive to what the holy spirit is saying the holy spirit may say uh, pray for so and so or pray for this event or pray for the city something so when i hear from god and i pray that is what prophetic intercession is all about so god will impress on our hearts and we are supposed to pray for it god any if we got any vision for, mm. about others mm. who are getting any danger in their life yes uh, we got a vision about that so we should need to share about that to them or not so that's what i'm saying instead of uh, sharing first thing is pray we praying but uh, if we tell them they also uh, they use it to do pray for them also na no? um i agree with you 
but mm, see sometimes a mistake we make is we we are in a hurry and it can create it can cause damage okay for example you get a dream okay you see this uh, person your friend they're in an accident and in the dream they die okay next day morning you wake up you give them a call you know what i saw you you were in an accident you died what will happen what will happen if i am that friend what will happen <laughs> it causes fear right it's causing more fear than faith of course i'll pray but i'll pray out of fear i'm like any time i can die i don't know which accident i'm going to get into there's no wisdom in the way we are sharing and the the uh, the content that we are sharing that that's what i'm referring to so as soon as we get a prophetic word it does not mean it has to be communicated like that bluntly so pray start praying say god you're showing me this what am i supposed to do start praying god will give the wisdom and then you know there's a right time right way in which you if you remember david and nathan okay david sinned against god you know he killed he he didn't go to battle he was engaged in you know adultery with uh, um bachiva and uh, he killed he got her husband killed he's done all this evil and it is hidden god has revealed it to the prophet nathan nathan did not go to david and say you are the murderer because if he did it like that in a blunt way uh firstly david would not have heard him and uh, who knows nathan would have been killed what did nathan do wisdom he goes he tells him one story there is a this one like, you know there's an eve and it has been taken and all that uh, and uh, you know somebody killed and the moment they come to that part nathan says that murderer is you and immediately david repents so there is a way in which prophecy has to be communicated to people we can't just you know you get my point right yeah so that's why i'm saying whether you tell it to someone or not first pray ask god god what do you want me to do how do you want me to share god will give the guidance okay sure so uh, god reveals to us and then we prayed through let's consider some of the prophetic intercessions in the bible there was a prophet of god by the name of amos and god spoke to him okay god revealed many things to him he was a seer seer meaning he would have visions pictures you remember in our supernatural hour we say are you sensing anything are you seeing anything because god has this way of speaking he gives us images he gives us words he gives us um you know like a visual and then it has to be interpreted so amos the prophet received god's messages and he received messages from god for the kingdoms uh, the northern kingdom of israel in the 8th century and at that time the uh, people were doing very well they were prosperous they were thriving but there was a problem what was the problem though they were so blessed they were engaged in idolatry they were not giving god their worship okay so in the old testament of course you know idolatry is uh, uh, physical idols but today we know it's not just physical idols anything that we hold in our hearts greater than god that is also an idol so the problem of the the people of god was idolatry and at that time god gave amos pictures about what is going to happen to the children of israel so these were communications regarding a coming judgment so firstly he saw this is all in amos chapter 7 so firstly he saw um a plague of locusts a plague comes and it destroys the fields so amos understands god is talking about judgment over the prosperous nation judgment is coming second he sees a devouring fire 
the picture of a fire it comes it destroys the people now when this happens what should the prophet do god is showing the prophet i am going to judge the people so what should the prophet do say okay god okay thank you received message received yeah so his heart was moved you remember what abraham did when god told him that sodom and gomorrah is going to be judged he said please god you know is there a way for this judgment not to happen and then he starts to talk to god and look for an option to protect the people Amos did the same thing. He prayed to God and he said, "God, let it not be. Relent, O oh God. Relent means, uh, please have mercy. Have mercy, O oh God." So, as a prophet, he's receiving the message of judgment, but he's also a prophetic intercessor. He's praying for the people. He's praying on behalf of the people to God and saying, "No, God." let it not be have mercy have mercy on the people and so we see that god actually listened so let's read amos chapter 7 verse 6 can someone quickly turn to it and read it please and um, those verses and the lord repented for this this also shall not be Yes. Hear the Lord God. Yes. So notice God is saying after Amos's prayer that, that this also shall not be. So God heard the prayer. So when God shows us, particularly when He shows us judgment, what is He expecting? To pray, to say, God, like Amos, say, God, have mercy. we know this is what the people deserve this is what the land deserves but please god have mercy yes sir vinay pastor like now amos received the prophecy of judgment and hmm. he prayed and uh, yes. here we see god relented concerning this in verse 6 uh in revelations also and in uh, so in the end times it's it's judgment and uh, so many things are happening people yes. are dying yeah. and diseases war mm. uh, so what about that like yeah should so, we pray for that or yeah sure so when we when we study about the prophetic we will learn that there are some portions of what has been revealed that god will not change no amount of praying for that to change will change it so those things we cannot pray about for example uh, eschatology you know like in that we study about the end times uh, the different wars and people dying that's not going to change because you see god the way he works is quite different from us so there are laws in the kingdom of god that we have to go by uh, and god has already given sufficient time he has given grace everything is done after having done all that he has concluded that those things are going to take place so we can't stop it we're not talking about those things there are other things you know as far as uh, people are concerned nations are concerned uh, that jesus has provided for it right uh, and so because jesus died on the cross uh, and i am forgetting the exact scripture but i think it's isaiah 59 uh, 59 or 52 where it says that the blood uh, blood of the lamb is sprinkled on the nations what does the blood represent forgiveness redemption right protection yeah so the the blood of jesus has given us certain provision so for example uh, amos amos is praying before the new covenant but even there the mercy of god is available which is what abraham had the revelation of 
and he started to plead with God for that. Okay. Now, after the cross, we know that mercy is available for the nations, for the people. So we can pray, like God have mercy. But we cannot pray for God to change the end time events. That will not happen. But we can pray for their salvation, maybe? Yes, we can pray for their salvation. Okay. Yeah. So as we study the scriptures, we'll get an idea like what is permitted, what's not permitted. And we pray for those things, yes. If we receive a word for someone mm -hmm. who is elder than us, okay, elder, elder uh, than us, okay, and older than us, so, but we can't tell them, okay, this this thing happened mm -hmm. in my dream or something, and uh, if we like, uh, like, but we know that this thing is from God, so we can pray for them for yes. in privately. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. First thing, you prayer, nobody can stop. So you just keep praying and uh, ask God, God, should I speak to them? Should I tell them? If I have to tell them, then how to tell them? God will give the wisdom and at the right time you can share with them. Yes. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, why God use uh, some other, even we have relationship with God, even we are praying to God, why God use uh, other people to, to, to talk to with us? And uh, how can we confirm that God, was, God is only talking with us? If it, is, if it is through the word of God, they will also use the uh, word of God. Now. So how can we confirm that, mm. that word? Yeah. So you see, in the kingdom of God, as I was telling Vinay, God has a way of working. Okay? And uh, uh, God's... God's purposes we have to understand. When God created man, he created man, woman in his own image. He created them to rule and reign. We have established that already. right? Through that, he gives us assignments to do. And we usually say God uh, generally chooses to work through people. And there's a lovely statement in uh, one of our APC publications, I think Kingdom Builders. Um, God uses imperfect people to perfect imperfect people. Why? We don't know. But that's how he is. He's working in all our lives, helping us through each other. Are we perfect? No. We are trying to uh, you know, conform to the image of Christ and move towards that perfection. But he's still using us, though we are imperfect, to perfect another imperfect person around us. So God always works like that. Uh, one scripture, I think you can look at is 1 Corinthians 3, 9, which says that we are co-workers with God. God works with people. That's why he's using people. Okay, so that is the first one. What was your second question? I forgot. Sorry. How can we confirm whether uh, a prophetic word is from God or not? Uh, Romans 8.16. Romans 8.16. There's a scripture. It says, the spirit bears witness with our spirit. So the Holy Spirit, he will confirm to my spirit that this is God. Let's imagine somebody gives a, a, a word. And in my spirit, I'm very uncomfortable, very confused, very... I'm not feeling the peace of God. It's not from God. Why? Because Holy Spirit is confirming to my spirit, don't receive it. So you and I, as we grow with the Lord, we can easily identify the Holy Spirit's uh, impression to our spirit. So that way, that is one of the ways... I'm just telling you one basic way how Holy Spirit will tell us whether it is from Him or not. And every believer can find out. Ma'am, it also is that uh, when you hear the prophetic word, it also says that the confirmation is that you that word is glorifying God. Yeah, true. Right? That's another test. Yeah. So we should ask whether that uh, whatever that person said is it glorifying God or not. That's also true. Yes.
even even if the situation is chaotic mm. um when we receive the word even if the situation is chaotic we will have peace in our hearts yes, yes. yeah so yes. it's uh, so it doesn't matter if the situation is peaceful or chaotic that situation doesn't matter mm. but what's happening in our spirit as the spirit is witnessing in our spirit that's what matters yes yeah uh, yeah because sometimes we can take the situation in hand okay the situation looks favorable and unfavorable and god is god is working in favorable situation and god is not working in mm. unfavorable we can mistake it that way also correct no yeah so see uh, you're saying using the circumstance to interpret whether yeah. it's god doing that's, it not doing it that's not the way yeah right. that's generally the final resort most of the times god speaks I'm, through his word and yeah. spirit circumstance is sometimes he uses a circumstance so don't go by the circumstance yeah. i'm i'm uh, pastor i'm talking in sense of like when i receive a prophetic word mm -hmm. no matter what situation i am in as of now correct so i won't take that circumstance as the parameter if god is talking to me or not mm. it's just it's i'm taking god at his word in my spirit if this mm. if my spirit is at peace no matter what the situation i am in now yeah. that's what matters correct that's a primary determinant how your spirit is sensing what god is saying so if if your spirit is sensing that don't go by the situation just believe god and just go with that that's what god is trying to tell you and the breakthrough will come if you pray hold on to it yeah, yeah. so god uses imperfect people to perfect imperfect people okay, it's like a tongue twister <laughs> right but uh, yeah it's a good one god uses imperfect people to perfect imperfect people okay all right so um the some of the questions that all of you are asking are more related to prophecy and the prophetic which you will study in depth later on but today we will only try to understand some basics for the sake of prayer in the case of amos he prayed he prayed to god and god relented we we read verse 6 where god said okay it will not be so today when we get these dreams sometimes people get dreams about judgment oh god is going to judge uh, india god is going to judge this country this place that place it may be true that that is what god wants to do but what does he want us to do like amos we have to wake up and we have to say god have mercy have mercy o oh god let it not be o oh god that's why he's showing us so that you and i can pray for mercy and amos prayed god relented abraham prayed god i mean there were no righteous people so he had to pass judgment but if there were righteous people we are sure that god would have left sodom and gomorrah without judging think about moses moses was a leader of a very um stubborn people they were you know they were always complaining they were very stiff necked the bible bible says so they were not listening such people there were times when god got angry with them and he told moses i'll just destroy them this is too much i'm providing everything i'm showing them the way i'm protecting i'm doing everything these people just are so stubborn and what did moses do he prayed to god he said god no please these are your people don't destroy them what will the nation say so moses as a leader when he's hearing what god wants to do just like amos just like abraham he's also going to god and saying no god have mercy have mercy so why does god reveal judgment sometimes so that we can pray okay we have to keep praying so will the judgment go away maybe in the case of amos it went away in the case of abraham it didn't because the people were so wicked but at least abraham tried he was an intercessor for the people but we have to do our part right and intercede who knows 
maybe the judgment will be reduced also we don't know okay but we have to cry out to god and that's the reason god is revealing so as soon as you get a picture of something go to the lord in prayer and say god let there be mercy let there be protection let there be healing oh god let there be prosperity oh god okay so that is the primary reason why god is showing us regarding judgments now let's go on god can prophetically show us about the coming attacks of satan so imagine you know we wake up in the morning and we've been saying we should have a prayer schedule so we started praying according to our time table but suddenly god is impressing on our hearts pray for so and so brother in the church okay uh, something is going to happen which satan has planned as an attack against that brother and we start to pray for it god is revealing beforehand to protect that brother and how is that brother going to be protected when i pray because god is telling me you pray in the case of peter jesus tells him peter satan has desired to sift you as wheat but i have prayed for you so before satan plans to um attack or test peter what did jesus do for him pray for him beforehand as a leader as a master to his disciples he had already prayed for peter so in the same way you and i can pray ahead of time for people we can pray for you know church people maybe there are some young people we are mentoring or leaders in our church who are working with us pray for them so that they are protected and we can those of uh, you know those of us who are parents and families you can pray for your children pray for protection as they grow up they go to different places to study right many many things happen but as a parent when you pray what happens is you foil satan's attacks they can be protected ahead of time so this is also something that will happen when we start to pray for people so when we pray for people um you know what what is this whole prophetic prayer prophetic prayer it's like a fence okay so many of us when we have a garden and we have some nice plants in the garden what most people will do is they will put up a fence around it now sometimes it will just be uh, some sticks tied together with ropes but the intention is that nobody should trespass and our plant should be safe so when we talk about prophetic prayer you see prophetic prayer is like that hedge or that cover that protects and god uses prophetic prayer to protect let's quickly read from hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 so hosea in the old testament if someone can quickly turn and read this uh, verse for us hosea chapter 12 verse 13 by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt mm. and by a prophet he was preserved mm. so notice this god is talking about the protection of his people out of egypt by moses okay and this verse says that moses is a prophet so how did god protect the people through a prophet and what what is the quality or the job of a prophet to hear from god now imagine if moses was not prophetic if he is not hearing from god he won't be praying the right prayers so here's another insight for us if any one of us is in leadership we must be prophetic we must hear from god so it is when we hear from god that we will actually be able to protect the people because we are praying according to the way that god is revealing to us god will show us and say this is what i'm going to do this is what is coming 
okay uh, or or this is the season that you are in so as a leader we hear from god and we start to pray and say god yes you do this according to your will you do this according to your purpose okay and those things begin to happen we are able to guide the people in the way that god is speaking now imagine if the leader is not prophetic meaning not hearing from god god is doing something else we are doing something else there will be a mismatch okay and we may even miss out on the blessings and the increase that god wants to bring when we don't know the heart of god for the people so it's very important for the leadership to hear from god number 1 second to be prophetic intercessors every uh, you know every man of god that we've mentioned so far prophet or a leader they're all praying they're intercessors so when we say yeah we are leading people we are leading pe- people you know god puts people in our hearts to serve them to guide them to lead them but one of the roles of the leader is to intercede prophetically for the for the people now without interceding if we are just doing all other things we will not be able to uh, release that divine protection upon the people so as a leader you and i should pray by hearing from god what is god saying for the people okay let's pray okay so hear from the lord and pray that is the uh, that is one of the important tasks of leadership prophetic intercession so hear from god yes uh is there i um, mean prophecy i'm telling means uh, listening from god yes. is there any chance directly god spoken through mm. us when uh, when we are in a congregation we are just praying uh, for everyone mm. uh when we fill with spirit uh-huh. some of the some of the people use it to di- uh, make prophecy yeah. directly louder is there any chance did holy spirit directly speaks and prophesies for someone hmm Uh, are you saying in the church yeah okay is is it possible for someone to just release a word of prophecy for the entire church yeah it's possible hmm? for a specific person for a specific person also it's possible it is possible uh, at the time we can, i mean uh, the prophecy that we we can i mean we not listening from god we are directly sp- spoken Mm-hmm. yeah di- directly we are speaking so you see uh, when we talk about prophecies generally we get a picture word uh, sense feeling in in our spirit that's a normal way but we also say that there is another way that is inspiration like you open your mouth and you don't even know what you're saying it's all coming out so yeah. prophecy can be like that also it can be both ways inspiration okay so it's possible only thing is uh, like in 1st corinthians 14 paul talks about order in the church when people are exercising the gifts of the holy spirit it should not be in a disruptive way like you know everyone's talking in tongues everyone's prophesying there's more confusion like that so he says whatever you're doing do it in an orderly way don't do it disruptively so that's one thing we have to keep in mind ma'am can uh, like prophecy can happen in a way that god can tell us mm-hmm. that this person in, is doing this this bad thing and this person happen. is doing this bad thing yeah it can happen it can happen like some pers- like for suppose someone in someone is smoking and it is on the it is in the church mm. so uh, i as a pastor can receive a word that guy is smoking god is telling me that or yeah. that guy is in a adultery can mm. that happen yeah so um see it's possible for us to to uh, know it you're saying prophetically nobody tells us or anything yeah, like god is telling us that okay this person is in this lustful thing yeah like that yeah it's possible so we can discern those things now again how do we deal with those matters uh, it's important you know I, i we can't just go behind the pulpit and say okay that says the lord you're doing this how does it help 
is that person going to change because you're telling publicly and shaming them? So these are the ways. So when we talk about prophecy, there is also the presentation of prophecy, which we have to learn how to do it the correct way. If we don't do it the correct way, it will not have the impact that God wanted that word to have. Got it? So God can tell, but we have to know how to uh, present it and deal with the people. But there are times, there are times, when I just, I'll just finish. When God's, um, you know, we say like a revival, when God is moving powerfully, and in those moments when sin happens, the judgment can be very severe. Okay, God can reveal, and the judgment can also be immediate. For example, Acts 5, Ananias and Sapphira. Peter, nobody told Peter that they are cheating. They came with an offering and immediately Peter says, how could you lie to the Holy Spirit? Who told Peter? Word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit told Peter, these people are lying. So the moment he said that, Ananias died. Sapphira, next, next moment, like she died. Judgment was immediate. So yeah, uh, God can reveal and uh, in general we we should ask him how to deal with it but there are times when the judgment will be immediate like we will have nothing to do with if God has chosen to judge that's it those people just right what to do right quite scary yeah yes Vinay. Uh, I mean maybe you can learn the from my mistake this is what I did uh long before I was quite young back then leading worship in my former church and I got a word saying that uh, somebody is into adultery and uh, I was thinking I am so small how can I say this to the church but it, I, I, maybe I should have used wisdom just kept it to my heart and then told it to the pastor but I didn't do I prayed for that but I felt the prompting more strong so I just told Okay, somebody is here. I didn't know exactly who that was, but I just told somebody here is indulging in adultery. Please give it up. God is, you know, is uh, warning you or is calling you out on that. And uh, that's it. I did. I told that I I finished the set list, and then pastor also came and said, "Okay, whoever that is, God is talking to you from a small kid." So take take the warning of God. Maybe I should have gone to pastor and told, uh, you know, this is what God told me, but I didn't do that. Uh, nothing happened to me, but uh, there was no change because uh, as pastor was saying, you know, like if you tell it publicly, there won't be any change or impact. Uh, later we found, the church found out who that was and there was a big chaos and all that. So maybe I should have used my wisdom, but I was a small boy back then. Yeah. No, as long as we learn from our mistakes, I think uh, that helps us to grow in God. Okay, so we are actually out of time. So let's take 10 minutes break. We'll come back, hold on to your questions, and uh, we'll take up the questions right after. Elkana, we'll take your question after the break. Thank you. 